the first picture I want to show you is that of a diamond burning. This is perhaps an unusual thing to want to do. But it led to the very important understanding that diamond is made entirely from carbon, so the same material found in a lump of coal. So for over 200 years, scientists were able to destroy diamonds, but were unable to create them. And the secret was applying high pressures at high temperatures. Diamond is the hardest natural material we know of, which makes it perfect for use as an anvil to apply pressures to other materials. Diamond anvils look much like the diamonds you'd find in a ring. If you clamp two of these together, pressures close to one megabar can be generated. Now, this is over 5,000 times the pressure you'd find in a normal gas canister. So imagine the weight of an elephant standing on the diamond in your ring. This is the kind of force that's required. So imagine these diamond anvils not burning as in the first picture, but at very low temperatures, close to absolute zero. Now, at this temperature, atoms no longer vibrate, and we start to see some very unusual behavior, such as superconductivity. Now, these effects seem to be encouraged through the application of pressure, which makes it very desirable to achieve high pressures at low temperatures as well. One of the best ways to see what is going on in these materials at these extreme conditions is using neutron diffraction. And this is a technique which is very similar to using x-rays, except you're unlikely to have had a neutron image taken of your chest uh, because it requires a nuclear reactor, six or seven hours, and up to 80,000 pounds. So imagine that we're performing this neutron diffraction experiment at low temperatures, and we wish to study a range of different pressures. How do we change the pressure? Well, the most obvious solution is to warm everything up, to clamp the diamonds at a different pressure, and then to cool everything down again. But this can take about 12 hours, which leaves quite a little achieved for your 80,000 pounds. So how about we save some time and we leave the diamonds in the fridge? Well, it would take a hydraulic press to apply the loads required, and these were too big to fit inside. Furthermore, the hydraulic oil that they work on would freeze at these temperatures anyway. We have come up with a better solution, which is using a bellows. This is a type of gas-driven spring. This allows us to use helium gas, which won't freeze as easily. It sounds very simple, but the device needs to be both strong and flexible at low temperatures, requiring multiple layers of profiled steel to prevent the device from bursting. Coincidentally, this is the same technology that's used on the Mars rover mission, since it gets pretty cold there too. So far, we've tested the device to a few degrees above absolute zero, but at much lower temperatures, the capillary line used to fill the bellows starts to cause a problem. Since we all know heat always flows from a hotter to a colder body, this capillary acts as a thermal link, which makes very low temperatures difficult to achieve. The next big step is to cut this link and to thermally isolate the bellows. That's me done. <laughs> This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.